<laughs> wow, you know a lot of stuff. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's that's a song title. And then I, I wrote it down. And well, that song kind of just accidentally happened. I love that it's like a picture of you. And it's like, this is giving me winning vibes. <laughs> uh, imagine, because I was singing the demo and I was like, this song is hard. And you know, oh, I don't know if it's right for them. How did you first start learning about music and how did you get to start in the music industry? Well, I've always been into music, I think, um, like since I've been just a, a small little kid, I've been singing nonstop. Uh, I used to go into my sister's room and steal all of her CDs, like Robin and Celine Dion and stuff like that. And I just try to like copy singers um and yeah so i've i've always been singing and i've kind of always known that this is what i want to do i think tell us about nesta nivå and how did you end up being in that show uh yeah that that was unexpected because um i just posted a song that i one of the first song that songs that i wrote um uh, called let me know uh, and it wasn't released i just posted it on facebook and someone who worked for red bull at the time uh saw that video and uh, costed me for for nesta nivo which was amazing so i went to an audition and there was a lot of other people applying to be um on the show with sabina and uh yeah they chose me for some reason and yeah it was a lot of fun. What was the inspiration for your song Losing Sleep that you made through the show? Well, I wanted to write something because we in the show we went to New York. So I wanted to have something that kind of reflected um, like the, the atmosphere there um, in New York City. And you like people say it's the city that never sleeps. So that's how I kind of came uh, come up with uh, Sorry, my English is so bad. That's oh. how I came up with the idea uh, of losing sleep. And then we kind of built that uh, theme together, me, Sabina and Ahmed. Um, so, yeah. How much time were you given to write the song? Oh, it was just one day. So it was mm. so intense. Like I had a few ideas on the plane ride over, but then we got it, like, we had one recording day in the studio. We were there for four or five hours. And I'm used to, you know, having a full day at least to create like a, a an idea of a song, but then you finish it later. But this was like, it had to be done that day. So the pressure was really on to make something that's really, you know, good and still feels like something I want to release, you know, because the, the the point of the show was to release this song. Uh, so I definitely felt that pressure, but I was really happy with the song. Um, I'm kind of used to working, you know, you write maybe a hundred songs and two or three get released. So it was definitely uh, a new experience, but I kind of like working on the pressure. So uh, but I had to perform it live after those three hours in the studio, and that's where I <laughs> kind of messed up. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. You know, I, I'm not perfect, and um, yeah, it was a good learning experience. Mm -hmm. How long were you in in New York? Uh, I would. I was there for. I think we did two days um, shooting for the show, like one in the studio and one just around the city. And I sang with the gospel choir. And then I stayed in New York for five days, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. So I made it a week uh, just because I'd never been before. So I just wanted to be, you know, have some time off and just see stuff. So I wrote some music and I just walked around uh, and I was basically on my own for five days. But, that was it, it was cool it was a it was a nice way to experience new york what did you learn from that experience well i think i learned that um it's okay not to be perfect all the time cuz i am a perfectionist and i put a lot of pressure on myself and doing that show like you have to create this single that you're going to release and 
it, it was kind of good for me to kind of let go of the control freak inside of me, you know, uh, to kind of like, oh, this is good. Like, we don't have to go through it 10 times. And yeah, sometimes I do live and I'm, I sing off pitch and it's okay, you know. Um, so yeah, I learned to not put as much pressure on myself. Yeah, because I remember seeing you live on Nestle World Tour. So I saw you yeah. on live and you were like uh, performing and the other artists are also. In how, yeah. how many stops were you doing that for? Uh, I think we only did one. We only did the one in, in Gothenburg. Mm. Um, so it was just one stop for us. And then I think they did uh, different acts in other cities. Uh, but I was just in, in uh, Gothenburg, yeah. Okay, so awesome. Is it true that you have been an opening act for Mahombe in one of his tours? <laughs> wow, you know a lot of stuff. <laughs> You've been digging. Uh, yeah. yeah, I did one show in... Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what an awful picture of me. He still looks the same though. Uh, but no, it was in Norway. It was my absolute first gig ever. Um, so I was so nervous, and then my uh, my manager at the time he was friends with Mahombi, so he, he asked like, "Oh, I have this new singer. Can he come sing? Can he sing a few songs before your show?" And I did, and no one knew what it was going to be, and it was like this crazy, you know, student party with a thousand students students in like a gym hall, and he was performing at like one one o'clock in the morning. And I thought it was like a normal gig. So I came with my guitar, you know, soft songs. And like at midnight when everyone was dancing to house music, they just stopped the music and they were like, oh, so here's Patrick Sean. And I came out and it was it was awful. Like I, I it sounded okay, but for them, they were like in the middle of a party and I'm like, <laughs> so it was not like the best, I, I should have like kind of prepared or known what I was, therefore before choosing the songs i was doing but it was a lot of fun like some of the people in the in the front they kind of felt bad that people were just quiet so they started like cheering and showing hearts and stuff so eventually like it it became like a, a fun uh, a fun show but yeah it yeah it was cool i have had so many strange gigs now that i think of it nice if I'm not mistaken, you were in a band at the time as well. A band? A band. No. So you're not... playing with a band. Maybe it's just people playing. Uh, yeah, maybe people room? playing behind me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it was just, I was still like a solo artist. Yeah. Okay. I wish I was in a band though. Bands are cool. Yeah. <laughs> You participated in German's national selection in Eurovision on, as a singer on Noise Generation EDM track. How did you end up in that collaboration? Well, uh, a few friends of mine, Joy and Linnea Deb, as you know, who's done like a lot of Eurovision and uh, Melody Festival and songs, uh, they wrote this song. And originally it was like a slow ballad and they wanted someone to do the demo vocals so they could send the song around and find an artist for it so i did the demo vocals and then the song ended up uh, with uh, noise generation in germany and he heard like oh maybe i can do this song and make it a dance track so he asked if he could uh, keep my voice on the song and i was like sure and then they called me like a few weeks later and said like Oh, by the way, do you want to do like a live performance? It's this TV thing, you know? Um, and I was like, yeah, sure. And I didn't even know what it was. And then like just two or three weeks before the show, I found out that it was their pre-selection to Eurovision, uh, which was crazy, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, that was the first time I did something as big and I'd never been in tv before so uh it was a crazy like ride to get there it felt like i just kind of slided into something super unexpected 
what was the inspiration for the song Loved You Once? Well, it was after a breakup um, and I, I kind of felt angry at that time or it's inspired by a time when I was like, why did I even open up to this person? You know, like I loved you once and then I say I loved you one too many times. So I it's basically saying I wish I've, I'd never loved you. Um, so that was the inspiration because I was so like heartbroken at the time. What is your approach in writing new songs? Do you start with lyrics or melodies? It kind of depends. Sometimes I have this clear concept or a lyric idea like, oh, I want to write about this or this happened to me. Um, but a lot of the times I work with other people in a studio and um, then I kind of like to have a clean slate. Like no one has, because if someone says an idea from the beginning, then that kind of sets the whole mood for the day. So I usually like starting with melodies because then the producer can play some chords and the songwriters like me and, and often someone else can start like humming melodies and kind of find a world where we meet, you know, because we all come from different backgrounds and have different inspirations. So sometimes it's nice to just find, you know, a melody language, you know, uh, that works for all of us. Uh, and then put words to it. So it, it, it depends. But often for my own, like my own songs, and if I don't write for another artist, I I usually work with uh, lyrics first because I usually have something I want to say and then I put melody to it. Do you play any instruments? Uh, mm. I play a little, like I play some piano and some guitar, but just basic, basic chords so I can write music from my home. But I, I, in the beginning of my career, career, I tried to do it on stage, but I just realized that there are hundreds of probably millions of people who are better at it. So I kind of gave it up. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't think I have the patience to kind of learn properly, but yeah, it works to write, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not a guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> what was the inspiration for the song Let Me Know? Well, that was written, in, that's inspired by a, a phase in a relationship where I was kind of waiting for an answer if we were going to go on or if we were going to end it. Because um, I was so in love with the, this person and that person was still like, oh, uh, like... I haven't decided like, uh, you know, we were kind of on a break, you know? Um, so I was just like, but it's not that hard. Like either, either you love me and want to be with me or you don't, uh, like that's how I felt at the time. And I get that you can be, you know, hesitant. Um, but it was such a long period and I was so frustrated and I felt like I was just waiting for something that I already knew was going to end, you know? So that's the inspiration to the song. Just like, let me know how you want to have it because I want to move on if it's not going to be us. You frequently written music together with Hermann Kardorfe. Uh How did you two meet and what makes you keep working with him? How did we meet? That's a good question. I've known him for ages, so it's hard to uh, to remember. Uh, it feels like we had mutual friends because um, oh, I can't even remember. But I think I think it was through like mutual friends because I have some some guys uh, that's been playing uh, like a band that I've when I do live I I uh, use two guys from Gotland in Sweden, uh, one's a drummer and one's a keyboardist. Um, and they're really good friends with their childhood friends with Herman. So I think I met him through them, uh, through my mus musicians. And yeah, we just started out trying to write something together. And we had so much fun the first day. Like Herman is an amazing producer and a songwriter and an amazing person. So we kind of clicked and started hanging out as friends as well. So I think that's how we continued working because you know, we just wanted to like hang out as well as do music. And uh, I prefer 
working with friends, I've realized. Mm, that's a yeah. good match, having to yeah. work someone close to you. Exactly. What was the inspiration for the song Lean On Me? Lean On Me was... Um, I wrote that song after the breakup happened. Um, so like now it feels like I've been talking about different phases like this. And this was the phase where the relationship was over uh, but we still remain friends and it was kind of a, a tribute song because I wasn't I wasn't angry anymore I wasn't sad anymore I you know I I'd accepted that it was over and it was just a way of saying like even if we're not together anymore you can still lean on me like we've shared all of this and just because we break up it's not over forever you know we can still be in touch and check in and um, so yeah it was just a way of me me saying like if if you ever need me i'll i'll be there like you can lean on me you frequently collaborated with magnus ragnvid on your music videos and single artwork how did you yeah. two meet and what keeps you working with him he is actually my boyfriend so uh, that's how we met um and uh yeah it's just been a lot of fun doing stuff together like you i've i've always said like i don't know if i could work with someone i'm dating but easier that he's not doing music he's like a photographer and he uh, shoots videos and stuff so we can still be creative together but you know, I have a whole world with music that he doesn't get and he has a whole world with photography that I don't get completely, you know. So sometimes we confuse those those two worlds and uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Is it, are you in the studio right now with, in his studio? Yes, I'm, I can hear I, it. Yeah. Yes, I'm he, yeah. uh, in his photo studio and he's doing a photo session outside. <laughs> um, so I borrowed yeah. a room here to do this interview. <laughs> That's awesome. And how much how much are you involved in the creative process when you're working? Uh, with uh, photography, you mean, or mm -hmm. videos? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I feel like uh, since Magnus is my boyfriend, it's it's very easy for us to kind of discuss and talk about everything from the beginning. And I feel like that's that's important to me, and I think it's important for him to kind of you know, get my vision. But then I let him like be all creative because like he's so open-minded and he has these brilliant ideas uh, that I could never, you know, envision because um, I'm better with hearing songs in my head and he sees pictures. So I let him do his magic and then we kind of make a, a mood board together and what we want the videos or the photos to like kind of um look like or you know like the message of it all so um yeah we do it very much together um and then i usually edit the the clips myself um mm -hmm. so yeah i'm still like a part of the end process as well mm. what program do you use to edit uh premiere pro okay have you taken yeah. like classes or how did you learn how to um, well, I started just watching YouTube tutorials because uh, at first I just wanted to like make short little stuff for social media, like, you know, ads and, and, and stuff like that and, and cut through videos that we shot that wasn't like a full music video. So I just started out a little bit and did like 10 to 15 second videos. And then I found out like how fun it was and I just kept on you know watching tutorials and uh, I kind of uh, became self-taught and then I took a class because um, I realized that I didn't know all the basics and my it took a lot of time when you didn't know all the like how to like which folders to use or which short commandos and stuff like that and mm -hmm. um, everything with grading is a whole new world like editing for me is kind of easy um especially like with music following a beat and doing it like a natural flow but then with grading like i have no idea like i just wish there was like an instagram filter i could put on stuff yeah. but you have to do 
everything manually, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun and it's it's always fun to learn new stuff, you know. And, and as you know, you you edit yourself, so mm -hmm. yeah. Which yeah, program? Premiere. I like our so like I think right before like the mellow started, I started with Premiere. So this is completely new for me too. So I'm like, I'm going to yeah. YouTube looking and seeing what I can learn. It's a yeah, lot of that's, tools. I mean, you can find all information nowadays, like online. So um, yeah, just, just you know, you just got to practice. And then I think Premiere, when, once you've gotten used to it, it's it's uh, it's a lot easier than the, the stuff I've been using before, I think. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it, it helps that because I know how to edit for in Photoshop, so it's easier to learn like the layers and that kind of thing. Right, yeah. yeah. Cool. Tell us about your song Prosecco and how you met with Nikisha Andersson, the director of the music video. Uh, well, uh, Magnus had actually worked with her on another project, so when I when I said like, oh, I want to do a, a music video, and he he kind of suggested that that we tried to have like a different director because we had been doing everything ourselves, but that was a lot of work, and it's always fun with a new perspective. So he was like, oh, you should try Nikisha, and yeah, she had some great ideas. We had a meeting, and then she was like, maybe we should just do it in LA. Like, I'm going to LA next week. Can't you come? And I'm like. What? what? Well, I didn't really, you know, expect that, and uh, I didn't really afford that. But uh, somehow I made it work. Uh, we were not there for a long time, but um, yeah, we flew to LA like a week later, and we shot the music video there, uh, and that was crazy because yeah, it was my first time in LA, and yeah, it, she knew every area, so it was the best way to kind of get a guide through LA from someone who's like lived there and stuff. Uh, and yeah, I love the, the result from the video, so. Yeah, it's, it looks really nice. And it's nice to have like more different types of shots when yeah. uh, when it's you singing and the guy is walking and. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, like what was the inspiration for the song 24? Well, that I would just wanted to make like a, a fun summer song that's like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking about this person all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, that feeling when you've met someone recently and, you know, you're just like, yeah, you, you just can't stop thinking about someone. And I was in Norway when I had the idea that I wanted to be like, 24 um, and saying like 24 hours on a seven day cycle because um, I was in like a staircase um, and I was going home with a train, I think. Uh, yeah, but anyway, um, I just been in Norway to write with a, an artist called Chris Holsten and I only had the time to be there for tw 24 hours and I was like, oh, I wish I would have stayed because we had so much fun that day. Uh, so I was like, why was it just 24 hours? And then I was like, oh, that's, that's a song title. And then I, I wrote it down and, and from there on, I, I kind of figured out the rest of the song with Herman. Um, what was the inspiration for the song for Altid? Uh, well, that song kind of just accidentally happened because I've never written, before that I hadn't written anything in Swedish and I didn't really have a plan to write in Swedish, but then I worked with my friend Elias Neslin, who's also produced a lot of my stuff like Prosecco and Lean On Me. Um, and he said like, oh, should we just write something in a different language just to kind of like find new kind of melodies? So he was like, should we do something in Spanish? Haven't you studied Spanish? And, and you know, I I have studied Spanish, but my Spanish is not good enough to kind of write a, a full song. Um, so, but we started with this beat that was kind of Latin. And then uh, it just, I don't know, some 
in a weird way, Swedish words came out, um, and we both were like, "Wait a minute, is this maybe is this, is this good? Like maybe this is good." Um, so we were like, "Let's just try. Let's just try writing in Swedish," because he wasn't used to it either. And uh, yeah, we wrote the whole song that day, and I just loved it so much. So I, I was like why should i just do stuff in english like i'm going to release this cuz i love it so that's how that happened would you like to release more songs in swedish yeah uh, i think i would um maybe not now but definitely in the future it was a lot of fun to to try writing in a new language and it's it it is my language so so it it felt natural but i don't know why i've waited cuz Yeah, you know, I think I was scared that everything would ch- sound cheesier in Swedish, but I felt like it was the other way around. Like everything suddenly felt even more honest, and there were so many u- words that I'd never used in other songs. So it was like a whole new world of like I can say anything. Um, so I definitely, definitely want to continue writing in Swedish, uh, but we'll see. I would love to make you know, like a, do a collaboration with a Swedish artist or something like that. Um yeah. Mm. See. What was the inspiration for the song Moo and how did the mamas end up on it? Um uh, when we wrote Move, we kind of heard some rumors that the show was interested interested in having the mamas as a group um in the show. Um as artists themselves. So we me Herman and Melanie kind of decided like oh we should try writing something for them because we all saw them the year before when they um, backed up Jon Lundvik and uh, you know we just fell in love with their voices and their personalities on stage so we were like we have to try this. Um so we kind of just sat down and thought about like what like how do we see the mamas because we didn't know them so it was just like our you know our um, thoughts on uh, on what they represented and i think we came up with like it needs to be like love joy uh, and then just like community you know like getting together um so that's like we used those words and then we kind of just wrote a, wrote the song about you know maybe from the beginning more about like sisterhood like we're there for each other and um you know we just thought of them as a group and they feel like they're so connected and they would do anything for each other so that's kind of how it started uh, but now i feel like the lyric could also be in a relationship or or a friend or whatever you know like it's just saying to someone that um yeah i would move mountains for you i would do anything for you cuz you do it for me too and that's the you know i feel like we kind of captured what we wanted and then we sent it to them and we had no idea if they would even like it um uh, but then they heard it and they loved the song and then we recorded them and that's also like when you write for an artist you never know like how it's going to sound and they just like blew our minds i like it was 10 times better than anything we could have uh, imagined cuz i was singing the demo and i was like this song is hard and you know oh i don't know if it's right for them but then when i heard them sing it it was like it was just like meant to be um so yeah i felt like every step of the way was just like things just fell into place and we believed in the song so hard from the beginning from that little studio room writing the song we kind of pictured it being there in the finals and then when it was it was like oh what how is this possible like how can you yeah it was it was surreal that you, we kind of dreamt what actually then happened um so it was it was amazing like the whole team was just loving and you know everyone was just amazing you mentioned melanie we a bit and you frequently yes. work with her too yeah. how did you two meet and what keeps keep you working with her 
we have the same management, so that's how we met, and that was like eight years ago, maybe. Um, but we just in the beginning, it took like three or four years before we kind of worked together and became friends because we just saw each other like on and off at events and and parties and stuff. But then once we got to know each other, we're like, oh my god, we're like the same person. And then we had so much fun, so. Uh, we started working, and then once I started working with Herman, uh, the three of us... Oh, the first session I had with Herman was with Melanie as well. Maybe I know him through her. Wait, okay, I can't even remember. <laughs> but never mind. Uh, so, yeah, we had a session, uh, a, a writing session, if that's... Uh, sorry if I'm speaking like songwriter lingo here we had a, a songwriting session the three of us herman me and melanie and uh, the song was not great the first time but we had a lot of fun so we were like we should try like keep writing together and we did and we've done some fun projects together um and like i said before it's always nice to have those friends that you know well that you work with that you can always come back to because we all three of us the three of us all have different projects and we do different stuff on our own and then you know sometimes we just want to come back home you know with your with your family um so yeah i love those guys yeah you melanie and herman wrote the song let it be for the mama's ep tomorrow is waiting what yeah. was the inspiration for that song I think we wanted to make a song that was kind of in the same world as Move because it felt like, yeah, yeah, it was so, Move was so well received and people felt that message. So we wanted to write a song that was also like about just spreading love and uh, also saying that, you know, sometimes life is really hard uh, and you feel like you're losing control but sometimes you just have to like let it be and it's it's all gonna sort, sort itself out if you just let it be so that was the inspiration of, of for that song yeah was it written specifically for them yes uh, yeah we kind of had plans already when <laughs> we were in melody festival and like oh we have to do more songs mm -hmm. uh, so it was written specifically for the mamas together with melanie and hermand you have written the winner songs for the past three season of swedish idol how did you the three of you get that job uh, well, I, we've only written two, actually, I'm going to be honest. I wish there was three. There was one in, the, in between, Sebastian, which we didn't write. But we wrote mm. Chris Clefford and then Tusse. Um, it was also like a... Uh, it was just a, a, a chance. Like most uh, days in this line of work, like you do... You write music and you never know what's going to happen. So we just wrote a song one day uh, with no artist in mind. And once we'd written Treading Water, we were like, this sounds like, you know, like a, a winner song in like X Factor or, or Idol or something like that. And then we started thinking like, oh, but they're sh like they're airing Swedish Idol right now. Like the finals is in maybe it was six weeks away and then we started like oh but they probably have a song already it's the finals in six weeks but like let's give it a try so we asked uh, our manager to send the song to the to universal music uh, which releases the songs from idol and uh, yeah they loved the song and they were like oh can you can you rewrite some lyrics because originally the song was more about a long distance relationship um so they wanted the song to be more of that winner anthem vibe so we wrote, rewrote the song and we did different versions and we sent it back and forth and then finally they were like okay we'll do it and then we had like two one week to record four three or four singers uh, that was potential winners because uh, everything had to be ready before um, 
and it was so much fun meeting them. And that's how I, we got to know Hannah and Chris and, and uh, Gabriel, um, which, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we when we did Rain for Tusse, uh we just sent it to the same person because we became friends with uh, the person at Frida at uh, Universal. So we just sent it to her. We're like, oh, we have another one. Like, can we do this here again? Uh, and they like that song, so yeah. What is your approach in writing those songs to fit both finalists as an individual artist? It is really hard. Like it has to be kind of a broad concept uh, and story. Uh, but we've tried to like. I think we've tried to capture that feeling when you're standing in that arena in the final you know like something because they've regardless of who wins the both finalists they've done the same kind of journey from being fairly new often to like having this whole you know rise in their careers um so we tend to kind of want to capture that moment like what would feel good to sing when you've like made it to the top two in idol um so i mean the Tussa song rain was a little bit um a little bit more emotional in the uh, in the storyline um but that's more like it also it's also inspired by their journey because it was inspired by the opinions that people have about you and that sometimes it gets you down but you know it's okay to cry sometimes and just you know let it rain um yeah i don't know if that answered your question it feels like i'm just rambling on but <laughs> tell us about solo contigo that was released by topic when magan and lena where was it written and did you and and how did you end up being one of the songwriters well that song was written wait a minute when we did we start that song i was in after I'd done the German um, pre-selection for Eurovision, I was in Germany a, a lot, working in Berlin, and um, I got connected with Topic, and we wrote some songs. Um, the first one was in Sweden, and it's called Break My Habits, and I ended up being featured on it. And so when I went to Berlin, I was like, oh, now I'm coming to your hometown. Uh, we have to write something. So we started this idea, just him and me in English. Uh, I think it was called Midnight in the beginning. Um, and then like a lot of songs, nothing really happened. Like we didn't know what to do with the song. It was a good idea, but it wasn't finished. And we just kept on writing other stuff. But then like maybe six months later he he told me that he played it to nico santos uh, another german artist amazing singer and he liked a lot of the melodies but he then changed some ideas for the chorus and they made like this whole new thing and they did it in spanish because he speaks spanish um so i was not involved with the lyrics like my 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 school spanish was not good enough to be in the lyrics but um but yeah it was he it was in, like taken from the melody that we did and he, then he twisted it and translated it um and then they found i don't know how they did like i think there was a, a label that found um uh, lena um hmm. which is yeah it was so cool. How does your songwriting process change when collaborating with different writers? Well, I always try to like listen to the person that I write with. Uh, like it's always, it feels like it's an hour of like therapy before you start working. Cause if you've never met each other before, then you kind of want to know stuff about people and how they're feeling right now and you know, what they, what inspires them so i usually just talk with people that i meet and then like after a while we're like oh man maybe there's a song here to find in 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 whatever you just said you know um so it depends if there's someone new i i kind of want to get to know them before but then if i work with people 
that I already know and that are my friends like Melanie and Herman. It's just like we just start the day like, Ooh, let's do this. And usually someone has like, oh, we should do this kind of song. And everyone's like, yay. And then we do it because, you know, we we work so much that we have time to just be like, you know, follow your emotion and be like, oh, today I'm feeling sad. Can we write something sad? And then we do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your mellow song, Tears Run Dry. Well, it's also written written with uh, Melanie and Herman. Um, because after we did uh, Melody Festival in last year with the Mamas, um, I just, we had so much fun and it was such a crazy uh, experience. And uh, I just felt like, oh, I, I, I think I want to try this as an artist, like I, I, I dreamt about it and I haven't really felt ready before uh, and I haven't had the right song. So now it's like, I'm gonna give this an honest try. And I, I called Melanie and Herman and I was like, can we just book a day where we just, you know, go crazy and just try to write a perfect song that represents me and what I would wanna do in the competition um so the day no the night before our session i in the middle of the night i woke up with this weird idea um and i always have my phone so i can record like both voice memos uh, and usually when i listen to it in the morning it's like you know you can't even tell what it is it's like <laughs> but this time i felt like oh there's something there and i came to the studio and i just played like maybe four or five seconds to melanie and herman they were like we know what you want to do and they you know because we're friends they they know me so well so they were like let's do this and we wrote the whole song that day um and I just knew straight away when we were done. I was like, this is it. Like, we don't have to book any more days writing for me because um, this is my mellow song. Like, I want to, I have to send this in. Um, yeah, so that's the story. Who are you collaborating with for your stage for Mellow 2021? I am collaborating with a guy called Julius Hayes together mm -hmm. with the production like the creative production team at svtm so they're very much uh, the production com company and the network is very much involved so um me and julius had this um feel like this idea that uh, julius presented and then um SVT has taken that idea and uh, built a number around it, which has been so much fun. And yeah, Julius was a part of the uh, daughters, uh, like the, the daughters um, performance, <laughs> yeah, last year. Um, and uh, yeah, he's he's just great with visualizing stage uh, performances, and he also does music videos and stuff like that. So yeah. And then we've uh, like done this whole thing together with the stylist and the designer and uh, yeah, PR team. And yeah, I've, I'm doing this independently without a label. So mm -hmm. I've kind of had to pick my own team, which has been amazing. Like I've just been able to find people that I like and that I feel comfortable with. And together we have formed this team that I feel like is a great support system for me through this journey. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be a lot of fun, no matter what. Yeah, do you think that gives you more creative freedom in what you can do in your performance? Um, you I don't know, like, I've, uh, I think that's why I chose it, but I've never done this with a label, so I can't really mm. compare, because I'm sure that all of the artists are very much involved in their acts. Mm uh but i just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anyone in my team that i felt like you know i couldn't be completely myself around um yeah H yeah hard to say but i'm definitely involved in every step of the way which is important to me mm. and it's it must feel like better to have people you trust and like know that you already work well together from before for sure 
uh, from working with uh, together with Magnus, have you learned any creative aspect that you have taken when you have visualizing your staging? Definitely. Like before uh, we started working together, I had like no clue about, you know, lighting and angles and stuff like that. Because sometimes stuff looks good when you just do it in the room. But then when you see it on film, like it's a whole nother thing. So it's been very helpful for me to have these years where we've worked together and I've kind of especially editing my own videos, I've kind of seen what I've been doing on uh, on film. Uh, and I've seen like, oh, that doesn't work. When I was doing it, it felt really right, you know, but from this angle, it looks crazy. Um, so that's been, that's been very helpful. And yeah, he just has these crazy creative ideas. And I think that's opened my mind a little bit because sometimes I can be a little like square in in visualizing stuff because if I haven't seen it before, it's hard for me to kind of come up with it. Uh, but I've definitely gotten better because of him uh, at that part, you know, visualizing stuff. Now, what do you like to do for fun when you're not working on your music? Uh, when am I not working? <laughs> Music. I'm always working on my music, so I don't know. I uh, if I'm not singing, uh, well, I I now I work out a lot. I I didn't used to think that was fun, but now I I think that's fun. <laughs> uh, and also like it depends if it's like summertime, then I l love you know the beach and stuff like that. And otherwise, I just have like dinners with friends you know i just love cooking together and having a nice glass of wine or something like that and just having meaningful discussions with my friends like that's 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 my kind of fun i'm not a really you know clubby person <laughs> uh, i'm more of a you know sit down and talk kind of person and do you have an ep or album to release after mellow and um, not yet um not a complete one like i have a lot of material uh but i haven't really chosen which direction i want to go because this year when i've you know not been able to work with people the same way i've i've kind of focused on my artist project and i've experienced experimented with my sound uh, and just tried a lot of different stuff. So I have songs that sounds, you know, like this, and then I have songs that sounds sounds like something completely different. So I think I just kind of have to find the uh, the you know the what do you say the red thread? No, that's a Swedish uh, expression. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to find yeah. like which direction to go um, and choose which songs. And then I want to write new and more songs. I'm so inspired now by this whole mellow journey. So I think as soon as I've done the competition, I'm going to write even more songs. But I have a, a few, I think I have at least two singles that I know I want to release, hopefully before mm -hmm. summertime. So that's exciting. Yeah, that's great. Uh, what are your career goals for 2021? Well, I wish I could have said going on tour, um, but uh, we never know. <laughs> it doesn't feel like I can plan any live performances uh, yet, uh, but that's always been a dream. Like I've done shows sporadically, but I've never had like a, a proper tour. So that would be amazing so it's it's a it's a goal but we'll see if it's possible uh and then uh, i would love to have my song on the radio um uh, that's also a goal just to kind of hear myself on the radio mm. yeah uh, lastly where can people find you online well they can find i'm most active on instagram and my uh, my Instagram name is at Patrick Sean, just like it's 
spelled here under um, and uh, but I'm also on Facebook I have a Facebook page with the same name and uh, yeah Oh, maybe TikTok, maybe. I just started that. So I don't have a lot of followers. So maybe people should go there because I, <laughs> I need some followers. <laughs> yeah. And your YouTube channel as well. Yes, YouTube. Yes, of course. Sorry. <laughs> no, just like letting people know where to find yeah, you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There's yeah. so many, you know, platforms now. So sometimes it's confusing. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for the interview and taking the time. Oh, thank you. This was a lot of fun. And, and uh, I love that you were so prepared with so many great questions and uh, stuff that I don't think most people knew about me. So uh, nice yeah. digging. Yeah, I always do my research. I want to do like, yeah. more. To well, you're more. an expert, so. <laughs> thank you. Oh. Sorry, I'm just popping in to let you know that she had <laughs> more questions, but she clearly got uh, skittish about how long uh, we've had you on for and there's other stuff we want to do with you. So that's why, um, yeah, you have to come back. So, okay. I'm, I'll be back anytime. <laughs> no okay. <laughs> okay. So one last thing, uh, do you have Twitter? Yes, I do. Not, not a very active one, but I do have a Twitter account. <laughs> That's what I, was about, I was about to ask. I was like, do you use the Twitter? Because no, having it not really. versus not using it. Okay, so um, I don't know. Maybe you are not aware that we've been doing this, so it's a fun surprise. But um, I'm showing you some of the reactions from the fans of Mello uh, to you being announced. So uh, a lot of them were in Spanish. And for the other people that we've had on so far, I have skipped them because I was like, oh, I don't know oh, the translations. But there were just so many. I was like, well, you know what? Let me like, I, I love the Spanish that. fans. Let me like show the love to them because they're always like the best. So <laughs> this one says, uh, this man is terrific. Uh, I don't, I don't know oh, if I should really yeah. try to read Spanish. Like, I feel like it will just be a disaster. But, uh, <laughs> Plenty in English, though. So this person is screaming. What? Always a good reaction. I love these people. Why haven't I seen this? Oh, I need to start uh, using Twitter more. Yeah, this one says uh, they're talking about your photo because it's sort of like the profile photo with the lighting. So they're, <laughs> they're making a joke about like uh, the yeah. eye. Yeah. And uh, this one is actually my friend Mike. Um, says himself and Melanie co-wrote last year's winning song and was a backing singer for the Mamas. High expectations here. No pressure. All of these are nice, by the way. I I don't think I found any mean ones, but even if I did, I would not... Uh, Show them. Yeah, <laughs> subject you to them. Because I don't know if you have that type of sense of humor of like, oh, what's the... this one is yeah. also in Spanish. It says, this man has very good songs. Ooh. That's cute. Yeah. Oh, here we go. To be honest, he might have a shot at winning. Oh, I love you, R Ruman. Ruman. Mm -hmm. Oh, icy season. <laughs> uh, this one says, "Love the music of his. I've heard in the past. Excited." Oh, here we go again. Why does this give me winning vibes? I love that it's like a picture of you. And it's like, this is giving me winning vibes. <laughs> well, some people can just tell, you know. <laughs> that's the power of great lighting. I know. That's why I have a giant studio light that's like blinding me. I'm trying not to look into it. Uh, this one... <laughs> isn't this a song? Wait, Lisa, isn't this someone like in the industry? Or yeah, he, he was yeah. one of the songwriters behind the uh, doctor. He's a friend of mine. So, <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. your friend is uh, hyping you up. Yes. <laughs> and here we go. I wouldn't kick him out of bed. <laughs> Ooh. The fans get thirsty, so prepare yourself for that. Yeah. Like, Lisel, I hope you don't mind that I was putting him on full screen so much, but I was just like, you know what? He's a good looking guy. I know how the fans think. They like, mm -hmm. they're going to want to thirst. So you're welcome. At first, welcome I to thought him. that I was doing it by mistake. You know, I was trying to like, what, what, what's happening? But then no. I, I understood <laughs> Oh, no, that was me. That was me running the controls. Uh, this one says, this sounds like a bop already. Do you know what bop means or do I have to translate? Yes, I know what it means. 
I ha it's like I have to ask because sometimes the Swedes they just don't know the most basic slang, and I'm like, all right, Stan means, and then I explain it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but if it's stuff in you know music related, I, I I usually get it, but there's definitely some words I, I probably don't understand. But yeah. This one says, "I have a good feeling about this newcomer." Mm. Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah. I love. By the way, just pausing the tweet segment for momentarily. Okay. You couldn't see me because I was backstage, but when you said that you're doing this without a label, my jaw literally dropped. Like, I should have taken a screenshot just to show you and, like, turned it into a meme. I was like, oh, no, I need him to win now. Purely on principle, because, like... <laughs> yeah, well, I think I want to prove that it's possible, you know, without the giants behind you. Um, yeah, I've gotten this far without a label, so why, why start now? Exactly. Period. Period. Okay. <laughs> uh, this one says, yes, finally he is doing his debut at Mellow. He is amazing and defo gonna serve. Also, my girl is a songwriter. Yeah. Oh, I think they're talking about Melanie. Oh, cool. So, she's got fans too. You can be like There's a little... so many people commenting. I love this. Like, I had no idea that people even cared about me. So <laughs> <I'm> excited. <laughs> this one's funny. I don't know him, but I won. No, like, <laughs> pero quiero. I love it. I love it. Everything oh. sounds better in Spanish. Oh, oh, look, this person's talking like me. Period. <laughs> Go stream oh. loved you once with oh. many exclamation points. Thank you, guys. Oh, this it is says, amazing. Yeah. And see, people know your stuff. It's saying if his consequence EP is any indication, this will be epic in all capital letters. So say no more, Sweden. You've got my vote. Mm. I'm so touched by all of this love. Like the the Eurovision fans are amazing, and your fans are amazing. Uh, oh, thank you for showing me that. That was um, yeah. I felt the love. That was amazing. So uh, thanks for coming on. It was like really fun having you. Yeah. And this was so much fun. It's been like an hour, and it feels like I could, you know, <laughs> do an hour more. But it was, yeah, thank you for having me, and uh, it was a nice chat.